أكبر الله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وخليله من خلقه وصفيه أما بعد فنسأل الله عز وجل أن يجعلنا وإياكم من المستمعين للقول والمتبعين أحسنه كما نسأله سبحانه أن يجعل ما نقوله ونسمعه حجة لنا لا علينا يوم الدين ثم أما بعد فالسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We are still on a journey through the people of the right hand and today we are going to have a look at what Allah Jalla wa Ala subhanahu wa ta'ala has preserved for them. We are also going to shed a light on what the people will answer when the people of the right hand ask the people of the left. And when the people of Jannah ask the people of Nar, what made you end up in hellfire? What is their answer? So this is what we are going to do today. Why? Because the Quran is without any doubt, Hablullahi Mateen. Yani the Quran is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's rope. Wa atasimu bihabilillahi jami'a. Imam al Tabari rahimahullah wa azawajal said that the majority of the scholars say it's the Quran. When Allah said, hold on, all of you, to the rope of Allah, it's the Quran. And this is why we need to revisit the Quran. We need to look into the Quran because it is our book. The Quran should be the spring of our hearts. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said at the end of a long dua, he said, وَجَعَلِ الْقُرْآنَ رَبِيعَ قَلْبِي وَنُورَ صَدَرِي And he turned the Qur'an into the spring of my heart. What does that even mean? Mean the spring of your heart? It means that the Qur'an is that which makes you intrinsically happy. That you are no longer in need of anybody else but Allah Jalla wa Ala subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Qur'an. Because that will be your guide, that will be your happiness, that will be your protection. So this is why shaitan has been fighting for so long to get people far away from the book of Allah Jalla wa Ala until we reach the point where I do not exaggerate when I say that the majority of Muslims no longer understand the Quran in Arabic. And even the Arabs, a lot of them do not understand the details of that Arabic language. And, and I think shaitan is dancing out of happiness now that the focus on the Qur'an yani, is becoming less and less. Because if we do not understand the Qur'an, how are we going to use it as a guide towards Allah Jalla wa Ala subhanahu wa ta'ala? Yani, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Abshiru, yani, abshiru, be happy because this is the Qur'an, hapullahi mateen. This is the Qur'an, the strong cord, the rope of Allah, your life line, yani, tarafuhu bi yadillahi يعني he said one part of it is in the hand of Allah and the other part is in your hand. So hold on to that Quran. But how are you going to hold on to it if you don't understand it? There is no translation that gives justice to the Quran. There is no translation no matter how strong somebody is. He will never ever ever be able to transmit the meanings, the deeper meanings of the Quran. That's impossible. So now Allah Jalla wa Ala, yani He says, "Kullu nafsin bima kasabat rahina illa ashab al yamin fi jannat yatasalun an al mujrimin ma salakum fi saqar." Yani when the people of the of the right hand na are in Jannah, they will ask the mujrimin, yani those who went to hellfire, "Ma salakum fi saqar?" Yani what is the reason that you ended up in saqar? And there are many, many layers and levels in hell. Yani hell is so deep that the Prophet yani threw a stone into a, uh, that the Prophet asked his companions, did you hear this? And it was a strong sound, a very, it was very noisy. And they said, what is it, Ya Rasulullah? He said, it is a stone that has been thrown into the depths of hell that has been falling for 70 years. So this is why the, the depths are, of hell are enormous. And that is why when people walk over the bridge that will be over hell, yani they walk over that bridge, some people will fall in. 
when you fall in, yani, then you will see according to the level where you go, you will keep on falling and falling and falling. And you will see some people being punished in that way, other people being punished in that way. You will have no way out for how long will you be falling. If you are a Muslim, then this is what you believe, then why don't we strive forwards to protecting ourselves against hell and to enter into the gardens of Eden? That should be our mission. That should be our concern. That should be our worry because we are all worrying about what the world will look like in 20 years. But the problem is that we may not even live, live until tomorrow. So, Ashab al Yameen, fi jannatin yatasa'alun al mujrimin. Yani they ask each other about the mujrimin. Yani they, they, this is one of the things they will be asking. Do you know why? Because the majority of people of Ahl Yameen, the majority of people of paradise were the oppressed. Like the Prophet ﷺ said, they were the oppressed, they were the poor. The ones that were, the, yani, that, that suffer the injustice of people who do not fear Allah Jalla wa Ala subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their rights were taken away, things were being imposed upon them, yani, taxes they couldn't pay or whatever it may be. Yani, that used to exist back then as well, taxes. So now to come back, these people are being oppressed and they have no way out. Jannah is their liberty. Jannah is their freedom. Jannah is their happiness. Jannah brings an end to their misery. But they have to work for it. Yani what made you end up, ask the people of Jannah, the people of Naam, yani what made you end up in Jahannam? And now all the traits that they are going to mention is the opposite of what the people of Yameen would do. Their first answer is, we did not used to pray. And the musalli, yani with the alif lam, means somebody that holds on to prayer, prays on time, holds on to the prerequisite, prerequisites and conditions of prayer, prays it with, tries to pray it with a, with a present heart and with all, yani in the light of knowledge. How many people today are sure of their wudu? You can say, I'm sure about my wudu. Do you know that in the books of fiqh, yani many pages are about wudu? That what, and, yeah, what invalidates your wudu, that what requires wudu. So even wudu and prayer, because we just think. But the problem is when you come back to Allah Jalla wa Ala, it is not about you thought it to be. Allah will judge you in light of how He wanted it to be. That's a very big difference. You can't come to Allah Jalla wa Ala and say, I thought my wudu was, was okay because I've been doing it for all my life. That's not the way it works. And this is why Abdullah Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said, like Imam al laraka'i rahmatullahi alayhi, he mentioned in his Usul Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, he said, wa kam min muridin lil khayri lam yusibhu. How many yani, people who want to attain good things don't attain them, even if they want to? So you need to, in light of this ayah, if you want to be of Ahl Yameen, just the, the basic people of Jannah, the laymen of Jannah. Now because we have higher levels, that's just the main people of Jannah. You have to revisit your knowledge. Don't carry on with worshipping Allah Jalla wa ala without asking yourself whether you have been taught how to pray. Not just by parents in general, but in the light of knowledge that you sat at the feet of scholars or their students. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يُعْبَدُ عَلَىٰ بِصَاطِ الْعِلْمِ وَلَا يُعْبَدُ عَلَىٰ بِصَاطِ الْجَهْلِ Because Allah is not worshipped on the carpet of ignorance, but rather He is worshipped and venerated on the carpet of knowledge. So the first thing is, لَمْ لَكُمْ مِنْ مُصَلِّينَ They could have said so many things. And this is why your jawaz, يعني, your, your permission to enter Jannah is your prayer. It's your first thing. Yawm al-Qiyamah, you come back to Allah. What do you think he's going to ask you first? He said, how, how are his prayers? How are they? So, لَمْ لَكُمْ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ That is the first thing they say. And then they make very clear, وَلَمْ لَكُمْ نُطْعِمُ الْمِسْكِينَ And we used not to feed the poor. وَكُنَّا نَخُوضُ مَعَ الْخَائِضِينَ And we used to talk nonsense with those who talk nonsense. Yani day and night we're talking about things we have no knowledge of. Day and night we keep on passing on what we read on the internet and we just pass it on without verifying it. And the Prophet Muhammad said, He who passes on everything he hears will end up being a liar like the one who spoke the lie for the first time. 
says Allah Jalla wa ala. Yani the, the, the dhan, the suspicions and thinking and, and I think is of no, no benefit whatsoever on the path towards the truth. I mean, when you have a problem in your family, may Allah protect yours and mine, then just to find out who is wrong and who is right. <laughs> now, there's there pro a problem between maybe your wife and her sister or your uncle and your brother. Yet you have what? Just to find out what's going on, you have a headache. You don't know. Sometimes you cannot decide. That is just a small little tiny family that is connected to you through your blood. If that is difficult, just a tiny little thing to find out. How do people today find out, find out the news in the world and pass it on? New, new news every, every single day, every five seconds. And how often does it change? First, that very big fear inspiring title to then come back on their words. That's not for the Muslim. He doesn't indulge in suspicion. He doesn't indulge in those things. Not meaning that he's not a man or a woman of the world, but he chooses his sources correctly. So, We were of the people that just used to, used to talk. Do you know that some of the Salaf, and he, the, he, he was seen not, yani meaning the predecessors, yani they what? he was seen not to speak very often. They say, why don't you speak that much? He said, well, because before I speak, I ask myself the question, if Allah were to ask me why I said it, that I could, what, that I could justify it. How many words have left our mouth that we can never retrieve again from, from, the, from the universe? How many words have passed through our throats? All while the Salaf used to say, the moment I started reading Quran, that's the very day that I started gossiping. Because I do not want the exit point for the Quran be the same exit point as my gossip and my slander and my lies. This is the mouth you read Quran with. And the mouth has a connection to the heart. So if you now fill that mouth with filth, with gossip and complaining and whatever it may be, then that connection will no longer be made. Then the Quran stays here and it doesn't go there. And that was the sifa of the Khawarij. And in the Khawarij, those people who declared Muslims to be kuffar because of a them, because of a sin, the Prophet said, and their recitation, the recital of the Quran doesn't pass their throats, it can't go to their heart because their mouths are, that's no, no longer the words of the Prophet because their hearts and their mouths were filthy. So this is why. And that last part I will explain in the second part of the khutbah and how it connects to something very, very dangerous. I ask Allah Jalla wa ala, Ya Rabbi, to make this beneficial for me and for you. Wa astaghfirullah kima huwa al ghafurur rahim. Alhamdulillah kathiran kama amar. Wa salatu wa salamu ala khayri wa abdal al bashar. So the people of Jannah want to know what, yani, why did you end up in hell? So many books were sent, so many books were revealed, so many prophets were sent, so many people were still in argument, even towards the end of times, we still had people practicing the deen. So, what made you forget Rabbul Alameen? And they just want to know because yani, so much effort has been put in guiding mankind towards the truth. So, Now they said, we were used not to pray, we used not to feed the people. We used to talk nonsense with those who speak nonsense. And then they say, And we used to reject with our hearts and minds the day of retribution. Until we died. Some of the scholars had said, the three things that preceded no, didn't allow them to believe. Meaning, if you don't pray, and if you don't feed or help those who are in need, and if you keep on talking nonsense, that will immediately have an impact on your faith. You want to strengthen your faith? Work on your prayer. You want to strengthen your faith? Work on helping others and forget a bit about yourself. You want to strengthen your, your faith? Don't talk nonsense. وَلَا تَقُولُوا إِلَّا حَقَّا And speak nothing but the truth, even if the truth is against you. Even if the truth is against you. Because Al-Iz bin Abdul Salam, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, he said, that which is against you in the dunya, but is in your favor in the akhirah, is something that you should seek. 
that which is against you in the dunya, but in your favor in the akhirah, in the, the afterlife, is something that you should seek. kubra. Because this is the greater good. The greater good is that even if you, lo you would lose everything, but you know yani your honor, for example, or the, the good business deal that you made because you found out that you are wrong. And you say, I am not going to jeopardize my paradise. I am not going to jeopardize my, my, my connection to the Almighty. I want to be on Sirat al-Mustaqeem because the better you walk on Sirat al-Mustaqeem, Habibi, the better you will walk over the bridge Yawm al-Qiyamah, Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said in Madarij al-Salikeen, the more you walk on the straight path here, the better and firmer you will be when you walk over a bridge that is as sharp as a sword and as thin as a hair. أضحك سنك طول الأمل ولم يبك عينك قرب الأجل كأنك لم تر حيا يساق ولم تر حيا على مغتسل نسأل الله عز وجل بأسمائه الحسنى وصفاته العلا اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت فإنك تقضي ولا يقضى عليك فإنه لن يعز من عديت ولن يذل من واليت باركت ربنا وتعالى اللهم لا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا إلى النار مصيرنا واجعل الجنة هي دارنا وقرارنا اللهم اهدنا واهد بنا واجعلنا سببا لمن اهتدى اللهم لا تجعل العلم حجة علينا يوم الدين اللهم اجعل بقائنا في هذه الدنيا صوما واللقاء مع رسول ما واللقاء معك رب عيدا واجعل خير يومنا يوما نلقاك فيه لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إني كنت من الظالمين وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين